Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to our final day of group stage action for the We Play TV. Don't it seem like almost said the T1 leak there, but nope. It is We Play TV. I'm LD. I'm joined by Gods. We're going to be casting Fnatic NA versus Evil Geniuses. This one, a best of three. Game one about to get underway. And of course, the winner of this match moves on to a winner bracket finals. Liquid and Kaida also fighting it out. Only two of these four teams will be advancing. If you want to watch Liquid versus Kaida, you're in the wrong stream. Head on over to twitch.tv slash beyond the summit two. With all that being said, Gods, how you doing? I'm good. I'm excited for today's action. One of the more... I guess top and bottom heavy groups as far as what what you'd expect to happen with both Liquid and EG here as well as well as two lesser known teams in Fnatic and Kata, but anything can really happen here. And this is one of those tournaments where it opened up to 32 teams, so you can really sort of pave your way for some potential upsets to happen. Yeah, it's a bit of a larger group stage, but the one nice thing I do like about WePlay.tv is we really get rid of the less deserving teams fairly quickly. Not Nothing against them, of course, but we know that you guys as the viewers want to see the best teams do get out, and that's pretty much what you will see. After today, we're directly into our eight-team double elimination playoff bracket, and that one should be a treat. It, pretty much the eight best teams of Western Dota. You can look at it and say, well, Virtus Pro is missing, but they also didn't. They didn't also didn't participate in this tournament. Aside from that, I can't really think of a single team that won't be in there. Uh, depending, of course, how this group grows, maybe we see Fnatic NA and kind of gaming finish one too. Who knows? Unlikely, <laughs> but if that's the case, then well, it would throw a wrench into things. Ten but seconds, as things stand now, if EG and Liquid advance, it would be by most accounts the eight top teams of Five Western seconds, Dota, or as close to it as you will get for an online event. Yeah, yesterday was really our first like cropping of some of the top teams because we had uh, pretty much a group of death with both uh, Empire as well as the Q-Pad Red Pandas getting knocked out. And it just comes down to the fact there's, if you look at sort of the tier 1 slash T2 teams, there's slightly more than 8 teams. You sort of can fit in 10 to 12 teams like we've got in the G1 League qualifier. But we said goodbye to two yesterday, we'll say goodbye to two more, and we're going to see how EG look to do with Fnatic and A, a team who, on paper, they should be able to easily beat. They should be, but at the same time, this is an EG team. We've seen some great play from them. We've seen them come out flat at times. And unfortunately for EG, I think one of the issues for them has been haven't had many official tournaments to compete in. They played in the G1 League qualifiers, got knocked out in, well, kind of a controversial match, but were on their way Ten probably seconds, to losing that second game versus Absolute Legends. A total of two games they got to play for that tournament. Five Before seconds, that, remember. what were they even participating in the earlier group stages for this event, but you don't really fight premier competition and we play until the playoffs, until this phase where they'll fight against Team Liquid, assuming they win this match. So they're not a team that's gotten as much practice and experience in the official matches lately. And sure, they're an experienced veteran team, but you know, sometimes it's about getting those matches in so you can be in form. And we'll see how they can deal with what Fnatic NA has mustered because Fnatic NA has gotten the Life Stealer and they've gotten the Magnus. So their five man Dota is very strong. They're very tanky. Their laning stage is pretty solid. But EG gets some strong carries of their own. They'll pick up the Gyrocopter now. And the thing I like for them is they've got the Nyx Prophet combo. So always going to be annoying to leave your towers in the mid game. Yeah, it's it's such a good ganking lineup that they've got. And that's something which is really good to punish some of, punish some of these lesser known teams because they're often more prone to making mistakes. They can come up some, with some big team fights, But if you fall behind and lose a team fight or two, you can just sit back, wait for the openings to show themselves. And with heroes like Nature's Prophet and Nyx Assassin, it's so easy to find them. Not to mention if you've got to sit back and farm Nature's Prophet, it's great as doing that. It's one of sort of Malk's trademark heroes in the past. It'll be interesting to see if he's going to be playing it here again, but right now for Fnatic NA, they've got a really strong sort of two core heroes here with Mag and Life, so they just need to sort of round things off with some solid supports. Yeah, there's a Rubik available? No, they'll go for the Lashrak, so a better follow-up stun to that Opa Wounds. Of course, doesn't protect the Magnus, but they could look to ban something like the Rubik out now, so you know, the one other thing worth mentioning for EG, we are starting to look at the draft, but talking just about this team, guys, they've been going through quite a few position changes. Uh, at first, they had sort of their, their long-standing positions, where Fear was the one position, Demon always in the off lane. We had Melk playing that four support jungling role. The three uh, or the two would be J.O. in the solo mid position, and then Beat is as the hard support. They mixed that up once, and I think they've even done another mix-up. So they had Fear playing support. They had J.O. playing... Uh, they had, uh, oh god, what was J.O.? J.O. was playing safe lane farmer, I believe, and Demon was going mid. Demon was carry. Yeah, no, and... Uh, yeah, the that, initial change that was, was initial the initial Yeah, you're right. Yeah. That was the initial change. The then, second change was maybe Demon mid. They changed it again. They had Fear playing carry, Demon mid, J.O. off okay. and Milk back on support. So I'm not even sure who's going to be playing what. This is a team that I feel continues to kind of, you know, mess around and tinker with the formula, trying to find something that works better for them. We've seen other teams do this as well, even in Asia. I think LGD China might be the big example over there. 
Yeah, well, I saw Marley tweeting that LGD International are changing their roles. I don't know how much truth there is to his tweet, but he's normally a very serious fella, so if he says they're changing their roles, I'm prone to believing him. But the other big thing with EG, not just changing their roles, changing their drafter. It's It's gone from Fear to Demon, and now we're back to Malk drafting, so... It's and it's not like one of those cases where it's QPAD where it's normally Wagger drafting and say, well, they're all at the same house together. It's a team draft. With EG, Malk is the only one in Europe for one thing. They're all playing from their houses. So while it may be a team draft over Skype or Raid Call, I should be saying, um, it's it's still him on his own drafting. Yeah, so it's we'll have to wait and see, you know, if they look to switch that as well. But for the moment, uh, we will see. Fear obviously is experimenting with a bit. Currently, it will be Malk. I, I don't necessarily feel like it's been a much different style of drafting. I mean, these are Ten picks I could easily see remember. Fear making. And even when Demo was doing the drafting for the team for a little while, which he was, uh, I didn't feel like it totally changed their drafting style. But maybe it's just little tweaks here and there. Maybe it's just the way they interact with their teammates that is a little bit different. So we'll see. Anyway, on that note, back to the draft where EG really taking their time with this one. They have banned out uh, the Darkseer, Fnatic NA, could look to run that just as a jungler or an off lane. Most likely we'll see that Magnus going mid. Lifestealer could either be in an offensive tri lane or as the safe lane farmer. Depending on which way Fnatic NA wants to go. EG doesn't really have the strongest tri lane because they have a Nyx there. Which needs levels to really have an impact. Assuming he is a support not going mid. But the one good thing is if Fnatic NA tries to get aggressive, there's a profit. So there's always that plus one and you have to be worried about diving the tower. Yeah, whether it's an off-lane profit getting a bit star for level or that sort of safe lane profit he gets lots of farm and levels, either way he can offer that sort of additional plus one to sort of give, give that counter gank. So EG, be interesting to see if they put him in the off-lane or maybe straight to the jungle in that four position, but however it's played, it does give that a potential backup and that's something which can sort of give, give them some help in their lanes if they're up against an offensive tri lane. Like you mentioned, Nyx Assassin, he's hard to fit into an offensive tri lane if anyone's going offensive right now it's probably fanatic and they i really think they should look to do something like that if you're up against a team like eg you can't really look to sit back play a farming wall eg will beat you at that sort of a game you've got to look to go for an early game snowball kind of lineup which is something like a life sealer offensive trialing get some sort of some kind of safe lane farmer whether it's a queen of well, queen of pain banned out but something like a luna whatever okay. it may be yeah, even something like a puck, perhaps, because the Magnus yeah. puck, puck combo is quite scary. A little bit squishy towards Nyx, but if you get the early levels in farm, you shouldn't be in too much danger. So we will see. And the other thing is, like you said, it's not just that EG will probably be more efficient with their farming. They're probably going to make the better late game decisions. This is a more experienced team. This is a team that's had some crazy comebacks over the years. And uh, you don't really want to put them in that position where you're going mid game, you're going late game. And, well, EG, they're going to pick up the Templar Sass now. Always have seen J.O. playing this. Uh, so I'm very curious if they are going to go back to the roles they were using for a long time, if they're going to change them again, if they're going to go with what they were using last time we saw them, in which case they, this would be demon handling it, but remains to be seen, maybe they're even just going to be flexible, so all to be revealed once the picks are complete. Yeah, I think it'd be cool if EG decided they would have flexible lanes based on what they pick, but if that's the case, it's Geo, like you say, he's always been the TA player. Back to the complexity days, they actually played a lot of TA back then, it was always Geo on him at the mid lane, so I imagine he's going to be the one handling this hero. We look at Fear maybe playing the safe lane farming Gyrocopter, Nature's Prophet going into the off lane, or maybe they abandon the off lane and send him straight to the jungle and possibly picking up another final support. You mentioned Rubik earlier on as a potential mag counter. He's actually still in the pool, surprising that Fnatic and 8 don't bat it out. So if they want to have a hero, a, a solid five position support hero who can steal the RP, Rubik's a great option. Yeah, they were busy banning out a lot of strong solos. The Puck, the Queen of Pain, and uh, kind of expecting this Nyx to be a support Nyx, I feel. is Puck is not really a hero you send to the off lane in most cases. Isn't going to do anything Five against a duel or even a tri lane there, especially with the Lifestealer in the mix. But if they expect this to be a support Nyx, then it makes a lot of sense. So it looks like they do. Fnatic NA, they'll get an H Apparition. Don't be fooled, this hero has fallen off quite a bit in terms of popularity, but... He has Chilling Touch, which at level 1 gives you, count it, a lot of extra potential damage. A total of 3 additional attacks per hero that each give you plus 50 damage. So 150 additional bonus damage potential over the course of a fight at level 1. In theory, an incredible tri lane ability in practice can be hit or miss, but when you see this hero, you just gotta think nowadays it's an offensive tri lane. Yeah, I, I feel like that with the Chilling Touch, it does Five give you the ability to use. So the main problem with Chilling Touch is a great spell. It's that the Cold Fleet is just not really reliable enough. Sure, if you have the the, the open wound with a split earth, you're going to get it, but it doesn't do the stun right away. You've got to wait for it. So it's really sort of hard to synergize everything up. And Ancient Apparition, you sort of put yourself in danger to do it. If you're ever going to get a kill, normally you're trading your own life or trading the life of Leshrac. You'll be finding a lot of one for one trades, especially with the burst damage of a Gyrocopter. So EG grab Rubik and... 
I, I feel like the offensive trailing can work, but it'll be a lot of kill trading, because whenever Lifestealer goes in getting a kill, Leshrac or AA very likely to go going down in return to a Gyrocopter Rocket Barrage. Yeah, and if you don't kill the Gyro, he comes around with this 315 base move speed and just starts running heroes down. Rage wears off because at level 1, it's only 2.0. Oh, no, sorry, it's three seconds of level one. It used to be 2.5. Uh, three seconds of level one, so it lasts forever, but when it wears, uh, not as long as it will when it's level four and it's maxed at six seconds. When it wears off, he comes around with the Barrage. Barrage has a very, very low cooldown, so you may get a kill, but if you don't kill the Gyro, he trades. Fanatic NA, they'll round things out with a Storm Spirit, so potentially your Safeling Soul actually matches up quite well against Nature's Prophet in a 1v1 and gives them the Life Stealer bombs at the mid game. Yeah, I imagine we'll see Smurf playing him. He's sort of known for playing some of those sort of explosive solo heroes, and this this seems to have his name written all over. It's going to be Hannah Montana on the, going to the Life Seal, the former Complexity player. So, as far as Stormtrooper is concerned, I, yeah, he needs to have a good laning stage. He needs to be in a, a lane where he's not going to be getting ganked a lot, and that's kind of hard to do when the Nature's Prophet on the map. But if he's in the one v one matchup against Nature's Prophet, and there's a tri lane versus tri lane, the supports can't really abandon the Gyrocopter. So that means he's very unlikely to be ganked, except by the possibly the solo mid hero. And it also means even if that tri lane for Fnatic NA is a lot of trades, or even if they don't convincingly win it, that's not necessarily the end of the world for them because Storm Spirit will Ten probably be getting really safely informed to himself when Prophet TP's in to help out the EG tri lane. So. When it comes to the mid game, sure, your life stealer might be a bit behind, but your storm could be potentially very fat. And, well, that really buff vehicle for the life stealer can make all the difference. On the side of Fnatic NA, we have Mojo Storm Stout, I believe is his name, or MSS, playing the Magnus. Hannah Montana playing the life stealer. Smurf going to be handling the storm spear. Has been pulled a little bit of regen here. In fact, 200 gold worth. F4L on the Lashrak. And last but not least, it's Keep Boston in your prayers. We all really should. It's such a tragedy what's been happening there. My sister, as well as a few friends, actually live in the area. Fortunately, are okay, but I know a lot of people are suffering right now. So, anyway. Yeah, it really is horrible. As for EG, over on the Radiant side, we have got Beatis playing the support Nix Assassin. We've got the Gyrocopter play, being played by Fear. Malk is handling the Rubik, and then we've got two more heroes. The two solos, we've got Demon on the solar mid Tempo Assassin, taking away Jairus signature hero. And then finally, we have got EG's wingman or J.O. playing the offlane Nature's Prophet. So it looks like they have found a set of roles they want to stick with, at least for a little bit, and should be interesting to see how these work. Uh, we did see Fnatic NA go into the enemy jungle, do a little bit of a camp block for the moment, but there are sentries on, on Malk, and I imagine he'll look to clean this one up fairly, fairly quickly. In fact, already looking to do so. So, Observer Ward placed, Observer Ward soon to be gone. Yeah, and you mentioned the Storm Spirit being pulled regen. Same case with the Nature's Prophet. He's got level 1 Null Talisman with Tango and Sal pulled to it from Mount. So. <laughs> right, what is this? I've not seen a Nature's Prophet yeah. pulled before. But hey, they, you expect the Storm to be pulled? Kind of makes sense. They both have a Null Talisman level 1. I think this is better for Nature's Prophet. He's got the better base damage. The Treants give him a lot of last hitting. Can't really harass with him when you're up against a safe lane Storm because his tower's right there. Um, ooh, DD rune. He denies it at the top lane. Yeah, the one thing is Storm's been pulled more. Storm's been pulled two sets of regen. Uh, J.O. only one. So maybe it equalizes in that sense. But it's a profit. If he takes a little harass, cops a little harass, no, no big they, deal. They, they've both been pulled too. Uh, J.O. got the two branches. Oh, he got the two branches. You're right. Yeah, so you're he's right. actually got extra stats, which is even better. Than, I think he's got a, I mean, he's got a stronger build than what Storm Story has because of those extra stats. Yeah, I feel like it's okay. The Storm probably needs the region anyway, because the Trants are yeah. going to be wailing on you. Prophet's got the better attack range, so you're likely to take more harassment in this matchup. I think it's decent for both heroes. We probably will see Prophet have a slightly easier time in terms of harassment, but he'll leave the lane at some point. you got to imagine Fnatic NA is going to get aggressive with this lane, look for some kills, and as soon as they do that, well, Prophet's likely to TP in, and then Storm, however much harassment he's taken earlier, will be left to himself. Well, it looks like we've got ourselves a five-minute pause. Melk's delivery guy. I don't know if that's code for something else. His <laughs> girl girlfriend suddenly arrived and needs, <laughs> needs some help. But... Yeah, or uh, maybe maybe some sort of drug deal under the table. One of EG's new sponsors. Yeah. yeah. I hear Melk has a very demanding girlfriend. He's very <laughs> very nice, of course. Uh, nice but... and demanding. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, we'll hopefully hopefully keep you entertained in the meantime. We don't have any Harry Potter on us. LD's actually just woken up, so I don't know if he's, he's in the mood for any shenanigans anyways. <laughs> no shenanigans. No fun. Uh, it is a good time to mention, though, guys, for anyone who's just tuning in. If you're wondering where the hell is Liquid versus Kaida, that's not the bracket. Damn it. There we go. 
Definitely just showed the G1 bracket, but it is in fact Liquid versus Kaida going on right now on our other channel, twitch.tv slash Beyond the Summit 2. Go make Blaze Company and also go catch what should be, I think, maybe the slightly closer of these two best of threes. When I saw Kaida, they actually played quite well in the group stage. Liquid maybe playing a bit stronger than EG, but should be an interesting one. I recommend having both open, kicking back, relaxing with some beer, with some beverages of any kind, whether it's coffee or what have you. But we will have two matches going on simultaneously until the final round for today. So the next round will be winners match as, as well as loser round one and then the final match will be a second third place decider so three best of threes in store for you on any one stream and uh probably the final best of three will be on with blaze on twitch.tv slash beyond the summit too yeah i'm excited we've got some good matches uh, for those of you who do want to watch in dota tv there is actually a dota tv ticket which is pretty cheap it's only four bucks which is right now you have all your round of 16 matches and even just for the final stage the round of eight where you have eight of the top teams competing in a double elimination bracket correct Yes, I think. Or is it single elimination? Yeah, it is double elimination. I believe it's double elimination. And apparently the organizers are deciding the grand finals will not have an advantage. Which, each, it makes them... their own. <laughs> it makes them, it, you know, I, I don't think it's necessarily the fairest format, but it makes for better viewing. So at yeah. the end of the day, I'm kind of okay with it. Yeah. Uh, the teams in that final eight, you've got Na'Vi, Fnatic, No Tide, who are now known as Alliance, you've got Dignitas and KP who qualified yesterday, and the last team is Mouse Sports. So there's six teams already qualified who are fantastic. On on paper, we should get EG Liquid as well. I'm actually really looking forward to that grudge match, hope, probably in the win the winner's match uh, in round two. But... Oh man, so many storylines with that one. You have oh, you have J.O. Yeah. against his former team, you have Bulba against his, and I think, you know, whatever Bulba, <laughs> whatever Bulba's involved, there's drama, even if it's all in good fun. He just has a yeah. way of stirring things up, and let's see what he stirs up for that match. But yeah, should be a pretty epic showdown. There's probably even storylines that I'm forgetting. Even, even beyond the players, just looking at the organizations, I mean, what, Liquid's been carrying EG in the StarCraft 2 Pro League that they joined up in, and... Uh, with, with Hero, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, could do it some work. It was the last last series they won where Liquid won like three three they won the series four three and something and Liquid won three of the four matches but for the most part it's been t I mean most of the players on that Liquid that what, Liquid EG mix it, it's mostly EG players playing not not for by any favoritism just because I think they have more plays in career or something but Liquid won three of the four matches last time but but EG has Jadon how is Jadon not carrying everyone that's what I don't get, I don't know man. Come on now. Big question. That was with Hero, because I remember Hero was playing his name nemesis, who was versing uh, the CJ Entis hero, and he won both times against him. He won the ace match as well as the, the non-ace match. I I have not been keeping up with StarCraft 2. I've been a little bit delinquent. I tuned in, I saw the Mothership core. It looked kind of cool. Yep. But that's about the extent of my viewing habits so far. I used to watch uh, Wings of Liberty all the time. Like Every day when I finished casting, I'd be like, oh, sweet, there's some... Well, usually not GSL, because GSL was going on when we were casting Asian Dota, but some sort of European Cup, and yeah. tune in and enjoy that. Not the case anymore. What's a drama going on at the moment with the uh, WCS bit? Oh, really? Fill me in. Oh, um... Oh, 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 oh with the WCS. Yeah, yeah. Should I've kind of been following that. The, the whole Koreas being able to play in the American and European qualifiers... Uh, then the whole MLG and ESL messing up all the qualifiers for it and not having proper seating, having all this weird stuff. But that's neither here nor there. For those of you tuning in who don't follow StarCraft 2, you probably just think we're talking a bunch of crap right now. Yeah, we we follow it, but kind of casually at that. And Well, anyway, game is a pause, so we're going to see solo mid. It will be Demon handling the Templar Assassin versus Mojo Stormstout on the Magnus, a matchup that TA should have the advantage in. And especially in Demon's Hand, you just imagine he'll have the a bit of an edge here, but still, Mag can sit back, Bottle Crow gets some farm at that. And looking towards our top lane, you're feeling a little bit towards the Nature's Prophet as far as the edge there. So far, seems pretty even, but I would agree with you that as long as Prophet's in the lane, he'll pull slightly ahead. And then, Gods, the big question is, how do you feel about this tri lane? They got well, the camp dewarded off the bat. Yeah, but EG, I don't think they really want to fight, even though they, d they just wait for... Fnatic and A to go on them. If Fnatic and A go on them, maybe they lose a hero, but they're just going to make sure they're trading one for one every time. They want to sort of look to out level and just starve the Fnatic and A try line a bit just by using these pools, which right now, Fnatic and A are still stopping just by. It looks like they were trying to do some body. No, they put a sentry down as yeah, well. Yeah, they de warded so. the EG sentry ward and mm. didn't actually block I, it, but. That's weird. Normally you'd put the sentry there to block it as well as deward the sentry. Uh, I, maybe they thought EG had a ward of their own and wanted yeah. to cut down on their vision, but in fact, if that's the case, you normally think more towards this area or up here. And, well, there is still an observer ward for EG. For the moment, EG not actually going for any pulls. The camp still remains blocked, but we should be spawning at the two-minute mark. And 
Well, we'll see if EG actually look to go for those pulls. I imagine they will, though. Because they are... The one thing about their tri-lane, they need a lot of levels. You really want six on the Nyx, and it's pretty important for the Rubik as well. The problem is, as soon as someone's pulling, that's sort of cue for Fnatic and Ada going for a kill. Because if it's a 3v2, even though that third hero that EG are missing is sort of just... I mean, look where look where Malk is right now. If they go on EG at this bottom lane, it's a kill. If, if Right now, if they just throw an open wounds on Fear, they can kill him. And they saw him, hero. too, but instead they back off. So, I yeah. mean, maybe just showing kind of their... You know, they're, that they're a little intimidated by EG right now, but... The one thing they have to worry about is always going to be the Nature's Prophet TP's in, because he's in that he's in that 1v1 matchup, so he can get some decent XP and farm at top lane. Storm may actually win the CS battle just because Nature's Prophet's going to be more interested in helping out this bottom lane. Yeah, he probably will have his camera constantly checking that lane, waiting for openings. You imagine your team will call it out, but you still, as a good player, just want to keep an eye on things yourself directly. And so far, that top lane is our, our two lead farmers located there. 14-3 and 3 for Nature's Prophet, 14-0 and 0 for Smurf. Our Storm, who is rapidly chewing through his regen, but will pop us off, has his bottle soon. And they did miss a bit of an opportunity there, I feel. And the big thing is, of all the heroes, it's the Rubik missing. That's the one that can disengage, lift someone up and throw them back, disable that secondary stun. Nyx can try to walk in, lumber in, and throw it in Impale, but it's not as reliable. It takes longer. And, I mean, even with that best support to disengage out of the lane, they still don't go. They are getting some decent levels. It's not like EG is pulling, so they're not really falling behind right now, but it's a lane where you run this aggressive tri lane to at least make some kills happen, to put some pressure on EG, and not to let them just sit back and farm. Yeah, all they've really done right now is slow down the Gyrocopter's farm a bit, but it's come at the cost of their own life stealers farm, which I think they're okay with, just because Storm Spirit is more important to sort of give them that easy lane. So the one thing they're doing is keep giving by having this offensive trial is while they're not really dominating the lane, they're giving Storm Spirit space to at least not get ganked up, to at least get a pretty safe level six and pretty safe free I say free farm, he's trading pretty much farm for farm with nature's profit. Middle lane, Demon pulling slightly ahead here, not overwhelmingly so. We'll see both heroes continue to battle Crow. I would like to see EG go for a pull. To be honest, if they just have Fear a little bit farther back while they're doing that pull, they should yeah. be able to get it off. Sure, maybe he misses a few CS, but the trade is you get the level advantage. And for me, I think that's totally worth it. Haven't gone for it yet, though. Man, going to find the 4-minute rune at top, which means, well, for Demon, a bit more bottle crowing going to have to happen, uh, assuming the Curie is not in use. He's sending it mid right away when he realizes he's not going to be getting a rune. And it's like you say, EG, they're happy just to sit back and not go for a pull here. They're throwing down the mana, but Hannah Montana out of mana, so he doesn't have open wounds, which is, well, for EG, it means they, this lane is now safe. It means they can definitely pull if they want to, but... It seems that they're just not really all that intent to do so. And that's another reason why they could have gone aggressive. I didn't even notice that earlier. But when you have Mono Burn at level 1, you do nothing as a support next. There's not a whole lot you can offer to the tri lane. And if you get this level 2, then it means you don't have the Carapace. It's normal to get it, but it does weaken your ability to blunt aggression. And still Fnatic, no aggression for them. So, well, we'll just see a bit of a farming trade. And I guess it's a good time since there's no action to take a look at the graphs. Very even in terms of gold. Pretty even in terms of experience. Even a slight lead towards the Dire. Uh, I think for Fnatic, the big thing is really just giving, opening the map up for their Storm. That's why I would like to see them get aggressive. Not even for the tri-lane so much, although it'd be great if they win it, but more just so that you have free farm for Smurf. You force J.O. to leave this top lane, because right now J.O. is free farming. We'll see a zip in. Wants to go here. Prophet ult deployed. Actually, Smurf, no pull yet. No mana for the pull. Not managing his mana quite right, and it looks like J.O. will be able to get away as a result. Oh, if he'd saved just a little bit more yeah. for the pull, might have gotten the kill. He was, I think, 10 mana short of having that pull after the remnant. He was really close, but just didn't quite have enough. He he knew he could almost get that kill. Jo, I don't know if J I don't know if J had done the math, but it didn't look like it because Stormsuit came very very close. Yeah, that was pretty close. At the same time, if he pulls, maybe he doesn't get off that extra zip. Doesn't have an additional overload charge, yeah. so hard to say without actually just running this scenario multiple ways. But was close anyway, that's for sure. And now he's got his treads up. Was he actually a sprout? He may be dead. Uh, no. no, he's okay. His phase boots. Oh, maybe J maybe not the phase boots. Yeah, it's a long way to dive. And it was a TP and he, he, he dies for it, so uh, not really worth the risk, especially considering I, less rec, no, no TPs at the bottom lane, but I think how things have started here for Fnatic and A, they'll be really happy about, because both Mag at mid lane and Storm Spirit at top lane have been gotten a, an Dying easy, cheap level 6 without being pressured. And I don't think trading that for a TA and Nature's Profit level 6 is really worthwhile. I think EJ will be okay with it just because they feel like they're the better team. So even though it's not necessarily the better trade in terms of the hero mechanics or matchups, well, we'll see. Melk gets caught out right now. There's the open woods to start. A lot of additional damage. The split earth is there. A three hero impale. The rip mot wrist will fly in as well. Here comes the rocket barrage. Pete Boston 
on the back foot. He'll go down. A TP in from Demon. Did have that earlier. Now, two to fall. Possibly three as well. Hannah Montana trapped up. Brought down by a milk crit. It's a tri-lane wipe, and they only get milk and his support Rubik. As far as the first blood, it did go to Fnatic NA, but giving away three kills, not really a great trade. Yeah, it went to them only by about half a second as well. So it was just very risky play. Nature's profit by this point. Easy TP. And we're going to see Storms that rotate bottom looking for a kill on Fear. He's actually going to go dive in the tower for this. This is really risky because he's using so much Oh, of wow. And he got he got it and forced the salve out. So a big, pretty big win. But if he dies, it won't be worth it. And it looks like he will to Demon. Yeah. That's not a great trade. One more trap. Oh, that trap on cooldown for three oh, seconds. Oh, maybe he gets away. Yeah, maybe he does. Enix here as well. RP deployed as well. Demon has overextended and may be in trouble of his own. Storm throws in a last lingering auto attack, the shockwave. Cleans him up and down he will go. Surprisingly, Demon not able to get the kill there. And the reason is, well, he only had basic boots, no phase boots or treads yet. Yeah, Demon uh, would have oh, a bit more well, fun. Oh, J.O. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just caught the tail end of that. TP's in, cleans up our Storm Spirit at the base, so J.O. Nice. And then TP's top, so doesn't panic. Just make sure he gets right back to the lane, gets a bunch of experience and well, it's a bloodbath, gods. Who do you favor? Uh, EG. You, you've got to favor EG. When they're trading kills, when they're at, at, while getting farm on their key heroes, you just know that they're in a comfortable position against a team like Fnatic and A. And you, it feels like Fnatic and A. It was a nice turnaround to kill on Demon, but it's not something they're going to be able to keep on relying on. Yeah, and speaking of Demon, he will be going phase boots. So you often see the treads nowadays just because you can toggle the treads and be a little more efficient with your mana. But I guess Demon figures I'll just rely on constant Battle Crow and I'll go phase boots. So. A little bit more chasing power. We saw there, if he had phase boots, that was the easiest kill of his life. But without it, not quite able to pick it up. The one ray of light for Fnatic NA is Fear is not farming. And this is an AG team that's accustomed to Fear farming. You look back to Dreamhack, I mean, stacking camps, just farming them all day long. And, well, Fear, it's a cure they can catch up in the gyrocopter. But with this kind of a start, it's going to take him a while before he really gets going. Yeah, we'll, we'll see sort of slow and steady uh, roll coming up from, from him. But I think for the moment, for Fnatic NA, it's all about sitting back, farming some of these key items. The Blink Dagger from Max still a long way away, but for Fnatic NA, they don't need to sort of get too aggressive. That's what really sort of costs them at the bottom lane with that lifesteal aggression. If they sit back, get the farm up, and just look to counter game. Mag having a TP scroll I needed, same for the Storm Street. They can just start getting a much stronger mid-game composition, it feels like. Yeah, and the thing is, Lifestealer, not particularly farm, but remember, they have the Storm Spirit, they have that vehicle, so once he hits level 6, then you can see some Infest Bombs. Even before your Blink Dagger comes out of Magnus, it can be Storm who starts the fights, and Magnus can just kind of follow up, look for an opening. At the same time, EG's getting big levels, we're going to see Beatus hitting level 6 soon, and that's where Storm has to be careful, he can't just sit farming top the entire game. Uh, yeah. If you sit there, one hero's in lane, and then Nyx is off the map, guess what, you're probably getting ganked by those two, as well as a Prophet, so... Beat is hitting six, a pretty important level for EG as well. We'll see a TP in bottom. EG, nope. No, Not gonna go. He do, Nature's Prophet does have his Midas up now. Geo is uh, farming really well. Face boots and Midas. And I definitely agree with the, the Nyx assassin. Once he hits level six, it's so dangerous. Even without Prophet TPing in, just an ultimate gives like an extra 200 damage nuke to Nyx assassin on whoever he's ganking. So it makes it so easy to find those pickoffs. A hero like Stormtrooper is very, very squishy, especially going for an Orchid build, which it looks like is what he's doing. I do want to point out, Fnatic has been fairly good at least putting a Sentry Ward down in the middle lane. They did some dewarding as well, so making sure they have some map control, and that's crucial against the Knicks, just so he can't roam too freely, and also so they can continue to have multiple heroes parked in this bottom lane and not worry about getting ganked by three or four. So I like what they've done with the Sentry Wards in lane. The thing is they'll have to continue to do that as Nyx is really about to hit level six. After this poll, he'll have it. Yeah, he's, he'll get there in just a second, and it looks like EG, just, well, at least for the time being, are happy to sort of sit back. Melk's actually going to rotate top, maybe looking for a gank, but more likely just wants to get some XP because he's only level 4 right now, so he'd love to hit level 6, get that spell seal up for himself, but he needs to be careful because Storm as well as AA could very easily and quickly kill off either of these two heroes at top lane because neither of them with much disable or lockdown to contest this top lane. Yeah, feeling a bit bold. He's going to foray directly up. No. Nope. Was thinking about walking up to the tower. He'll back off now. Has some observer wards. back up. Yeah, here comes four. So EG, level six on the Nyx, and here we go. No sentries in the lane yet. Well, I imagine this should be a pickoff on someone. Storm Street's going to be the, the attempted kill, and AA is not a really reliable backup. Leshrac's too far away. This Storm Spirit, he's going to fly out just in time. Impale just needs to go. Don't worry about the Vendetta here. He's going to go for it anyways. Maggie shows up. Skewer, RP, can he catch up four? He only catches three. Beaters doesn't get caught. But it looks like he's doing a ton of damage here. Moto storms up, making a free down demon as well as a 4 5 and a TP coming in from Fnatic NA. And here comes the buybacks. It looks like Hannah Montana going to town on fear, but fear, he's getting out of this one. Storms for its backs. Smurf, he's going on demon. Demon though, and the refractor. Oh. He's himself alive. 
One more remnant is needed. He's not going to be able to do so. Demon gets the kill. What a play from Demon. Yeah, lives forever and the day turns around. It's only the Lashrak who can burn through that refraction. Double kill up on him. Hana Montana thinks he can win this fight. He is wrong. Triple kill for Demon Dota, ladies and gentlemen. And on that note, you got to say, especially RP being blown there as well. EG and a huge advantage. And what's worse is Stormbot back. So that's actually, I mean, that's what, a team wipe plus one, I want to say? Uh, did Lashrak actually live through that? I think he died as well. So that would really be six kills then. Yeah, six kills in one fight. And the RP wasn't bad. It would either need, need to be a second earlier or to catch all four. It didn't catch the Nyx Assassin. And by the, the problem was Storm Spirit was already dead, so he was the main follow-up damage. And as a result, it was just EG cleaning up once TA got out of there. TA was so close to being brought down, but Fnatic and A didn't have the necessary focus fire. Yeah, I, I, it's like you said, Storm is their only damage now, because Lifestealer, he's only got phase boots. He's only level 7. It's a max rage. He doesn't have open wounds or feats close to be max, so those actually give you, especially the the uh, the feast, gives you a, a significant amount of damage in these fights. The other thing is, the only way they kill this TA is if Lashrak is burning him with edict charges, or if they can focus him. Neither of those happened. Lashrak was actually trying to chase Demon and up dying as a result now behind the tower we'll see a pickoff potentially but a nice skewer back in from our mag will potentially bring beat his load no he'll be okay he'll get right out of there and hn apparition is going to drop in the midst of his and now zip away from smurf just constant in the back foot not the position you want for a storm here comes the call down for fear and then a blanket from demon cleaves off chops off another head and it just feels like demon is snowballing didn't really have a dominant start mid but that one fight top all of a sudden out of control yeah, if Chiyo is the wingman here, Demon is Maverick, because he is just cleaning up hero after hero. They're going to go for this T1 mid tower now as well, as there's nothing really stopping EG, it feels like. Anyone in their way just gets crushed. And they're going to take the tower with the ease, and on that note, EG, if they take that tier 1 bottom, if they get some aggressive wards up, they have a great early run team. They've got Profit Trance to tank, they have Meld from TA, which is already maxed at only 14 minutes in to bring it down quickly with the minus armor. So look for EG to secure a little more map control, play some aggressive wards, and then go Roshan. For Fnatic NA, they'll need to find some pickoffs first, yes, but if Fnatic NA lose a few heroes, they give up that roast, they're in a world of trouble. So for them, they can't really afford to lose another fight or two, especially uh, it's going to be important to get this Blink Dagger Magnus up, but the death in that earlier fight top, as well as the time he spent mid not really farming, has delayed it quite a bit. And Jo and Demon both hitting level 11 now. Jo about to hit level 12, has his Shadow Blade up, doing a lot of damage, and is so mobile with this Shadow Blade. His teamfight involvement is just scary right now, and Fnatic. They've just going to be so scared of any clash happening where they're outnumbered. Yeah, look at him top. He's just driving a lifestealer <laughs> off the lane. And with phase boots, oftentimes you'll see a lifestealer can actually bully a profit off the lane, but not when there's these kind of items up on the profit. He hits you once from 600 range. If you go at him, he just shadow blades or phases away, and you're not catching him at that. Toying with some TPs into the enemy jungle, but not actually going to go. And it looks like for Fnatic, they're just going to have... Because they lost those fights, they lost the tier 1 top, they lost the tier 1 mid, they lost a bunch of map control. Now they can't really farm the lane safely, they're forced to retreat into their own jungle. And EG, look at what they're doing. Pulling and the double point as well, demon jungling. We have Ancients being stacked by Beatas right now. And then J.O. farming the enemy, the enemy jungle. We even have Fear just farming the safe lane. They are getting so much more out of the map. It's not even about that fight itself, it's about the ripple effect afterwards. Yeah, it's amazing. Fear just level 8, with not, it, it looks like he doesn't have a whole lot of farm, and that's just because of how well both Demon and Geo are doing. It's sort of making him look bad, but realistically, he's done well at this bottom lane. He's been the one that's sort of being focused down by Fnatic and A. We saw him get suicided on by the Storm Spirit earlier at bottom, and just being sort of on the receiving end of some nasty ganks, but... For, for EG, that's why they have these three cores, because when one sort of falls behind, the other two are sort of pulling ahead, farming somewhere else. And nobody's really behind. I mean, Fear, yeah, didn't have the best start in terms of CS. He's not farming particularly well, but he's 3, 2, and 6. He's had plenty of involvement in kills. He's got a lot of assist gold. He's got some tower gold as well. It's not a fast start for a gyro, but it's not an unbelievably slow one at that. And he's rushing a BKB, so once he gets that item, that's really all he needs in the fights. He'll jump in with BKB. They have to RP him, but even then, if he gets off cooldown, doesn't necessarily matter. He's already sort of done his job at that point, and good luck killing him when your lifestyle doesn't particularly have many items, and Rage, of course, will remove Empower, so you don't even get that bonus physical damage at that, and I feel like for EG, they're getting all the core items they need. They get this BKB up on Gyro, they could just start forcing team fights, and I'm not sure what Fnatic NA could realistically do about it. Aside from a 5-hero, 4-hero RP, just don't see it happening. EG, they're gonna smoke into the Roche Pit, and like I mentioned, with that max meld, very easy to claim. Yeah, this is gonna be... Pretty simple to do. Even with just two heroes in here, the beauty of this is that Fnatic and A don't actually know what's happening. They see three heroes bottom and think, 
well, they don't think Roshan. When you see three heroes on the map, you're not at 16 minutes in, you're not thinking that two heroes can just solo Roshan. But with a DD rune on Demon, with Trent's to tank, easy pick off. Demon gets the Aegis and now suddenly things go from bad to worse for Fnatic and A. And he's, he's not even going to back off. Often you take Roshan, you're like, let's get the hell out of here before they come. Demon says, let's go in. Let's find some kills. Come with me, Wayne Man. Wayne Man and Maverick moving down the lane. Demon sees a. Oh no, he'll get caught by the RP. He wanted that regen rune. Will he be okay as a result? He gets skewered back in. Now he eats a cold feed as well. Jo going to piss route and then pick up the region, but he does get clipped by a stun, will end up being able to live in the end. And now over to the other side of the bite where it's Mojo Storm's out. The Calvary's arrived. The back of his here comes to the form of Vita's with the Impale as well as the auto attacks. And down he will go. Vendetta used there. And well, with RP down, just start pushing. What is going to stop you at this point? Oh, very, very little, it feels like. It's it's like you mentioned, the only way Fnatic can win a fight is going to come from a big RP. It's on cooldown. And well, EG are just diving past towers even. They find a mega kill for J.O. And uh, this is just getting really, really difficult for Fnatic and A to do anything. That's that's not the wingman's role. I think J.O. needs to go back to school for this one. You're supposed to let Demon get all the glory, all the fame, and all the girls. And J.O. just stealing those kills left, right, and center. 5, 0, and 7. Demo does like 95% of the damage, but J.O. pads the stats. Yeah, J.O. continuing to get more kills. E.G. continuing to get more towers. It's the tier 2 at middle drops. They're going to back off, it looks like. Go back to their side lanes, farm things up, and probably look for these tier 2 outer towers. There's no real need for them to look to breach the tier 3 high ground just yet. And for now again, it really feels like they're just falling too far behind to do anything. It's almost a 15k gold lead or something, and we're just 18 minutes in. It's like we talked about right before that big fight happened for EG. Yeah, trading like this against the top team, maybe not ideal, but when you just have the confidence of being the more established team, having the veteran players, you're okay getting a, a, anything decent out of the latest stage, even if what Fnatic got would sometimes be trouble against other, against say a team like Team Liquid or Virtus Pro, some of those top North American European teams. They got decent trades out of the latest stage and that's really all they needed. It's just one big fight where they execute slightly better than Fnatic NA. They had all their heroes there when they needed them, and then it's just been the snowball rolling down the mountain from there. Fear, now BKB up can freely push, and for Fnatic, there's just no way to kill him aside from an RP. And even then, I don't think they could do it. We'll see Demon jump in one shot, <laughs> one kill. Oh, Demon, you're too much, and now he wants a double. He's going to be chasing the HNAP Russian. These poor supports, just in a world of trouble. Demon is going to dive it. Nope. Nope, he's, yep, he's, he's thinking good. about it, wants the vision. Scouting with the illusions, a blink. Where's the meld? He gets it from long range, from downtown. Down will go, but now the RP. Maybe gonna suffer for this one. He has Aegis forever, and even if he dies, he won't actually lose his life off of that. Able to run himself away, and... Well, a link will see him drop here, but he's still got Aegis. Do they actually look to go again? That's the big question. Not with Vitas here. Now they look to run, so Demon gets a double kill, throws the Aegis away but hey it wasn't going to be around for more than three minutes or so so on that note eg i think aegis or not they're still going to go high ground yeah it looks like they are preparing to do that at this top lane now geo's going to tp back in probably make some trains he's got an orchid up already and this t3 tower going to be dropping very very fast if you're on the front line he's got the bkb demon comes in with a, a decent amount of damage with the crystallis pickup and there's just nothing Fnatic can do rp on cooldown once again as you mentioned earlier whenever rp's down eg know they can push yeah it's on cooldown and they all, all they got rid of it with it was the Aegis. So in retrospect, you look at that and say, as frustrating as it is, probably better to let Demon run away and just lose two supports instead of popping the Aegis. But now EG breaking high ground, and they still have so many other core heroes. It's not just Demon you have to worry about in these fights. At the same time, I mean, good luck actually catching all five in an RP unless EG really make a mistake with their positioning. They do have Blink Dagger now on the Magnus, so it would get easier, except no RP. So we'll see. Siege continues. Looks like EG going to claim some racks. Basically uncontested, and I don't really think Fnatic can even fight this as stupid as- Well, they'll try it. Lifestyle Bomb comes in out, but Fear gets off his ultimate, gets off his BKB, manning up against Santa Montana, and it's Demon just out man fighting a Lifestealer. The solution to the Lifestealer comes, a buyback from Smurf. This is the second buyback of the game. He's trying to zip away. He barely did. Actually got a double kill off of that. Didn't really look like he did much damage, but the two supports very low. It's J.O. who comes in, cleans him up. Four heroes dead. Double buyback from Storm this game, and on that note, Fnatic NA, they tap out. EG, a convincing game one. Yeah, it feels the only kills Fnatic NA got was when Storm was buying back and catching E. Not even really catching him by surprise, but more just catching EG in a position where they have heroes who are already low HP from what Storm threw it, zapped in with an infested life stealer. They're already down a half with an AA ultimate. So he does get the kills, but EG, at no point in this game do they really doubt themselves. Yeah, they, they, they've switched up the roles again, and I think there's no question that EG could pretty much do whatever they wanted with these roles and have a relatively decent time of it against teams that aren't top teams. The real test for them is going to come, assuming they win game two, they take this best of three, and then they play Team Liquid. What can they do then? Because 
I don't actually think Ichi has a signature win against the top team. Even Absolute Legend, sort of a, a, a team that's on the cusp of being a tier one team, a tier one, tier two team, kind of in the mix there anyway, the top 15 teams or so in North America. Europe. They struggled against them in the G1 League qualifiers, albeit a game two, lots of technical issues. Even before those began, they were struggling at that. So we will have to see, gods, if this EG team is here to stay. Sure, they can slap down Fnatic at A, but when it comes to the big boys, do they have what it takes? Well, we'll have to wait for that. Game two is coming up next, but right now it looks like EG really have the upper hand of this series. Yeah, EG do, and it's like you say, they've got to get their shit together, because TI3 is coming up fast, and you've got to prove yourself if you want to get invited, so it's good to see EG win games, but it's always going to come down to how they do when they verse the big boys. Guys, with that being with that being said, it's a triple crystalless demon TA that leads the way for EG. They take game one of this best of three. Stay tuned. Game two coming up next. If you haven't heard, we have two streams going on. Liquid versus Kaida is currently happening on BTS2. Twitch.tv slash Beyond the Summit 2. With all that being said, game two of EG versus Fnatic A coming up right after this.